With the start of a new year, some are taking on the no alcohol challenge, dry January. The idea of dry January is sort of a good idea to sort of help our bodies uh, sort of recover from some of the overindulging. People who cut alcohol for a month slept better, lost weight, had more energy, and even saved money. Another study found it decreased cancer proteins in the blood and improved insulin resistance in just 30 days. I kind of looked around at my life and I realized that drinking had become a much bigger part of it and a damaging part of my life. Ari Eastman, host of the podcast Sobriety, has been sober for more than three years. And she says she's not alone. More people are looking for healthier options. A lot of people are realizing if there's all these external factors going on that I can't control, what are the things I can do to make myself feel better and give myself a, you know, a fair chance at having improved mental health? Alcohol use worsened during the pandemic due to stress and boredom. Between April and September 2020, a University of Arizona study found severe alcohol dependence skyrocketed 400 percent. And while dry January may seem like a good idea, medical experts say it's not for everyone. Not everybody um, should or could uh, go uh, cold turkey off alcohol because there is that risk of withdrawal. Quitting abruptly for some moderate to heavy drinkers could lead to serious issues, including seizures, hallucinations, or the rare death. Some choose to ease into sobriety bit by bit, I think I was maybe 22 or 23. It wasn't kind of like a cold turkey thing where I just stopped. I kind of just started doing it less and less and less until it was just not really a part of my daily life anymore. And if dry January isn't your speed, there's always damp January. It's a little bit more laid back. Drinks are limited and alcohol isn't completely out of the picture. Kat Sandoval, Scripps News, Chicago.